Hello and a warm welcome to another episode. My guest today is Malte Meinke, Senior Team Lead for SDR, BDR and the Account Executive Team at Central ERP Software. Together we are discussing the perfect formula for your compensation model, which motivates your sales reps, but also pleases your CFO. Welcome, Malte. It's such a pleasure to have you, Malte. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to the session. So we, we are talking today about compensation and incentives and it's such a huge topic and it's such an important topic. So I would say just dive into it because we, we talked about it. There are so many challenges you were facing and still are facing. So what are the, the most pressing topics and challenges you are facing? Wow. I mean, yeah, yes. First of all, it's a huge topic. So I think everyone has different experience, but what we are currently or overall facing, I think is to align, let's say, company goals and personal goals. I think that is one huge thing because you want to align and uh, motivate your team, but it also needs to be in align with the company perspective, right? Because every company needs to make money on one hand. Yep. And I think that's to find there the right mixture is kind of a challenge, but it's also crucial for the success of a company. That's super interesting. So let's start from top to bottom, I would say. so. The, the stakeholders you are currently in touch with drafting and optimizing the, the compensation plan, is it the CEO, the CFO, obviously you in, in the commercial area? So could you just elaborate a little bit more on the current set of stakeholders? Exactly. So when we did it like a year ago, it was with, the, with our VP of sales, right? And of course, it needs to be signed off with the CEO in the end. But that is like and with the proposal from our side, we developed then a compensation model that we believe is the right to drive, let's say, the individual motivations and also drive the company's success. Of course, our head of um, finance has a very important role in that because he's always looking into this ARR OTE ratio. Right. And I think which is in the end also crucial, which was for me also at the beginning, something where I thought, okay, Hey, I just want to have a high performing team. I want to have drive my team to motivate them and to achieve as much revenue as possible. But you then sometimes forget a little bit like the company perspective, which is of course the big picture and which is in the end, I think the most important. Yeah. So I assume that because you already mentioned the, the kind of classic ratio, depending a little bit on uh, the, the industry itself, but roughly rule of thumb would be um, OTE to um, ARR um, multiple of five. Exactly. Five, six, your dream, you're in a dream world <laughs> that makes it even more profitable, but five, yeah, roughly five. I was in a very similar position of, on the one hand, you would like to, to keep your, your employees happy. And uh, I recently read about a benchmark study that in, in average, even for series B startups, a quota um, attainment is around 60 to 70%, mm -hmm. which I personally do not find motivating. So we will come to the, yeah. to this, but on the, the flip side, you need this kind of multiple or I also call it a kind of gross margin contribution per, per sales rep um, yeah. to, to really balance this, this out. So from a financial perspective, it's relatively easy, I would say, as at least as a starting point. So how do you recalculate or reassess it and put it into quota for your sales team? So, yeah, I think there's two things that I also agree with you, like quota attainment from 60%, I think is for, of course for a company, maybe nice, but on the other hand, we, and we believe we are super happy to overpay and pay, let's say 150% or 200, because then the ratio will go up. I think that is something what, if you look into compensation, like every compensation model needs to drive to the overperformance because that makes the ratio extremely high. So I think this is something super important to understand. What we do, how we calculate ratio and targets, I mean, our MRR in comparison, our ARR and to the OTE, we just calculate it on individual level and then give in individual targets and then on the ratio. However, I mean, target setting and is sometimes a very tricky part because even though you know what you need to achieve, what kind of ratio, it is impossible, as you said, then to reach the target because then you will Will have let's say only a target achieved for six percent so sometimes you have then this issue okay you know the ratio you calculate the backwards but you also know okay this is the amount of leads you will get in so what do you do mm -hmm. then you are talking about the 60 percent where we ending up in the end yeah and the and, other thing which drives me because for at least quite a while it was kind of headcount 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 
I, you could do this, the same simple math and say, if my current existing team has a quality attainment of 60 or 70%, either I have to push more on the lead and demand gen side, or I just have way too many people. Exactly. I think, and that is something which is a very important planning ahead. So I think now, I wouldn't say it, but this year, the whole market changed, right? Last year was headcount, headcount, go, go, go. So it didn't matter or it doesn't matter. Now this year is more about, okay, what is like, make it really profitable? Like, do we need to let go people or do we need to adjust some things? That is, I think, a tricky question that most of startups are asking themselves at the moment, right? But what we are doing, we are trying, believing in a second growth phase. So we want to next year kick off again. So we really believe again, okay, we need to be very profitable, but also we want to grow. So we will do the second and say, okay, we need more leads. And then my personal goal as a leader, I always want to have an attainment of a company of my team of 80%. So that's my goal, right? I love, of course, if if there's one person who has like 150, 180, and the other one, if it's only 100 or only 20%, then I do a lot of things wrong as a leader, right? because if we have such a big gap, it's not great. So I want to have an average of 80% um, target achievement of my AEs and SDR BDRs. And if I achieve that, I think I did a good job in my function and also for the company. Because if in the end we have an achievement of 150% all over, yeah, then maybe the targets are too low, let's say. It, or it was an amazing overperformance of the team. And that is something like, yeah, people always will forget. Yeah. But it is something, depends how it looks. So many questions. So A, let's start with the nerdy one. Are you looking at the average of your team or the median? A uh, median. Okay. This is, I think it's super, super important to look at the median because in every yeah. team I've seen outstanding performers. Yeah. But the, the median is... So median. No, no, median, I think also you're 100% right. So thank you for correcting that. But it's like, yeah. And I think still there will be some people like who will be over over and some people yeah. below but if you have a median of 80 percent i think it is a great mix right it's a you 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 have some very good performance like but i think that's a good mix yeah. you set good targets and the other thing i'm i'm still torn between and there's rarely it's black and white but i i'm i'm wondering would it be so if i can choose or could choose between an 80 percent performance of my my team or a 120 mean mm-hmm performance i would prefer the 120 if the unique economics behind are still feasible exactly and i think that is something super right what you're saying i think if the company economics are behind correct so if this target was set correct like if you have this um and that's why we're talking about this arr ote ratio if this is good then it was perfect but if then if this ratio is three and you have a target achieved 120 percent then you are like um Ah. Yeah. Okay, good. So then let's, um, I think the, this, this gives, uh, gives a, a very good overview. Then let's dive into a little bit more, more details because I'm, I'm super curious. I have uh, kind of a golden rule, three, three components should be represented in every uh, model. Don't make it too complicated. Do yeah. you have any kind of tips and tricks, how to structure, um, kind of the comp model one level in more detail? Okay, but um, so for, for do you mean now for which individual person, let's say SDR role or BDR or AE role, or which would you like to hear okay, first? Let's start, uh, let's start with the BDR or SDR. So I okay. would separate or distinguish between inbound and, and outbound. Um, yeah. So how do you structure this, okay. this kind of component? Yeah, we had a lot of discussion also in here, and I think there are like two uh, main parts that we are trying to, with our compensation plan, to, to stimulate and to motivate. So first, we, we want to create pipeline and we want to have, let's say, the amount of meetings we need to achieve our goals, right? But we not only want to have um, the meetings booked, we also want to ensure quality. So we are also stimulating at the moment now on opportunities. And I think this you can do in two different ways. Either you can say, okay, out of, let's say, 12 meetings, you need to have at least nine opportunities created. Or you can say it, and I think that we're trying at the moment is to how much MRR these meetings that have been booked um, create in pipeline. And there are, I think, some pro and cons um, because we are trying to stimulate now like bigger deals because these are more profitable for us. So that's why we are saying, okay, we will count, we are looking into quality of MRR because um, a approved um, deal that is, let's say, MRR is more value than just one opportunity than another opportunity. So that's why we are looking into that or 
doing that now since a few months. And what we see, which is a nice effect, is um, we're having this nice, let's say, fights, I would say, between the different teams, between SDR and BDR. They say, okay, this is a huge deal. The AEs are not saying, oh, this is not a big deal. So an opportunity, you just say, okay, it's, it's, it's an opportunity, but it doesn't matter. But now since the MRs will be approved, the pipeline MR, there will be a big, big discussions happening. And that's the right discussion within the team, what we are seeing, because the, there is a reason why the SDR or BDR um, estimated that deal for, let's say, 6K um, as a pipeline. And I think that is a nice behavior um, where we challenge each other in the company. And we are not that big yet that this takes so much effort and time. So it's still manageable, right? Um, so these are the two factors. We don't have at the moment um, in the compensation plan an activity. You just have it as a small extra kicker. If you reach this, this is a nice bonus. But we don't want to say as a hard requirement. It is just, okay, if you put a lot of effort and let's say, for example, in summer season, you're not reaching your let's um, your SQA target um, and the pipeline, at least you get a little bit for uh, for your efforts, but we want overall compensate quality above quantity. Yeah, I really like that. And in, in total, what is the split? So pipeline contribution and booked meeting, is it 50-50 or with the, mm, that no. bonus, is it? No, no. So we have the split, I think um, it's 60%, actually we switched it around. So 40% is a meeting booked and 60% is then the pipeline and the AMR accounts. So the, we even say, okay, even if you have less meeting, but the pipeline is bigger, this counts for us more. Okay. Because in the end, that's also what we believe um, will bring the company forward. And do you apply the same logic of um, OTE to MRR potential? In, in terms of uh, multiplier? No. So there we, 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 we of course, we have it um, calculated, but we, in this, we more look into, at the moment, um, only into the AE. Uh, but SDR, BDR, we don't have it yet included there um, because, yeah, I wouldn't say it's not um, feasible and profitable. We could, uh, we are just not that far yet. Let's let's be honest, right? Okay, so. no, no, it's just exploring the limits <laughs> yeah. uh, because you you can do fancy stuff. Or in general, I'm I'm a huge fan of having the same system applied for all the 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 functions. So if yeah. you have agreed to to an um, OTE uh, multiple, then you could use the same Absolutely. metric and say, okay, this is the expected closing rate and then you have you're still using the same metrics absolutely absolutely i need to actually check because i think so based on the bdr sdr targets our e target so i think if our multiplier by the AEs are correct it should also it cannot be different it needs to be correct also there but i would need to check and double check that that's a nice hint okay good then uh, another nerdy uh, question because i know that at least there are two philosophies so i'm i'm a firm believer especially in kind of sustainable and healthy growth that every sales rep should earn his fixed salary before he or she is getting variable means that you need at least a dedicated target attainment in for example booked revenue and or meeting schedules do you have this kind of threshold as well, or what is your so, philosophy on that? So um, we don't have, let's say, the 60% threshold. You need to reach 60% of your target to get the payoff. I think um, I somehow agree with you. I think it is absolutely understandable for every company. I think for me as a as an individual, um, as a, that's why we, if you have like a very... Um, let's say a company where a lot of things are so changing. So f where it's very difficult to reach your 60% because of company product, everything is changing. It is, can be very demotivating. And so to reach the 60% is kind of a hard, I think when we are like now in a stable environment where you're in a stable, where, where it's really feasible to reach it, I think it makes absolutely sense, right? Um, but until you're there, um, if you cannot predict, let's say, what is marketing product providing you, if you cannot predict how is the product, how is it outbound, I think it is um, more demotivating than like um, an ad, like a, a added value. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair point. That's why, for example, I wouldn't recommend to do it on a monthly basis. So mm -hmm. especially in kind of depending, on, of course, on the seniority of the, the revenue or go-to-market organization, yeah. 
I would argue that you could ex experiment with it on a quarterly basis. Yeah. Um, and then, like you were saying, I wouldn't be too harsh on it in terms of 70 or 80% quarter attainment. But I, and that's why there are two philosophies. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a transparency. Um, and yeah. also in having this kind of, yeah, it's, especially nowadays, it's important to have a healthy organization and therefore everyone needs to, to make a contribution. Absolutely. I mean, if my colleagues and my bosses are hearing this or they think, oh yeah, we should do this also again. So let's skip this topic and jump to the next one. All right, let's, let's do it. So <laughs> and that would be talking about the three pillars or golden rules. So that would be kind of one thing discussable and we, we touched it. So let's move on yeah. to the next one. The other thing, when you mentioned that you're pushing on, on deals, the second element I'm, I'm uh, loving um, is, is there any kind of multiplier or add on for dedicated deals and or segments? Mean. So we do we do multiplier for outbound, right? All right. Um, so that's our hardest multiplier because um, that's just one like where we see, okay, if this is, for example, for the AEs, if they close, their, if they create their own pipeline um, next to their own work, they get a multiplier of MR of, of two. And wow. this is what is our main objective at the moment because as you said earlier, you can do things, either reduce people or create leads. And we are missing leads, so we need to have a multiplier and stimulation of creating pipeline. That's why we put a multiplier on two on the outbound. And we we are thinking about um, about quality of contracts, right? Like if you, and that's a multiplier on, let's say, payment terms, advanced, whatever. It's not yet done, but we don't have any multiplier, let's say, on on company A or industry that yeah. we would like to target now. That's not at the moment in, included yet. Yeah, I guess if you have um, multi-year contracts, then you also get an, an multiplier applied on that? At, at the moment, not. That's also what my team is the whole time saying, hey, if we have a two years contract, we would like to have like also the quality of contract we would like to have because it's two years bounded. So why do I get then only only the same commission? So this is something we are looking into or what we all want to discuss. On the other hand, it is also what we, we are very hard in. I think that is also normal with many other companies with churns and like upsell down sales. So we are taking every churn into consideration and will be deducted from the compensation. So it is also for in the end, like for the AE or for the person who closed the deal, a very nice benefit to close one or two years because it's locked in. So the commission is safe. So it's also an added value for him. Ah, okay. So at the moment, we don't do a, a kicker on that. All right. And just to, to, to clarify, they keep participating on the recurring revenue? No. So we pay, let's say we pay a new business, MRR. Let's say there's a target, we pay the other commission out. What we are like, Actually, it's fine that you and we now from the next quarter, they will participate the first six months on the upsell and downsell. All right. And that means also in our model at the MRR that they're generating. So that's quite a very nice benefit, which on the other hand, it's also again a nice challenge for us because we need to adjust our targets again <laughs> because yep. like depend how much they are make revenue. We also will then participate on that, which means if you have different big deals or with big different companies, you need to put that into your considerations. Nice, because that would have been uh, an, another question. How do you make sure that the alignment and the handover from classic sales to customer success is fruitful? And how do you prevent that AEs are staying too long and kind of interfering or are in conflict yeah. with the customer success team? Um, but either way, they are participating on the ups and downs uh, for the six months after contract um, exactly start six yeah, six months after contract start so with us contract start means license start date and i think that is um, that is something what we also faced so you asked me at the beginning what are our biggest challenges so last year it was like just growth 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 just close as many deals as possible and the challenge was i don't want to say we we were sloppy but we just had so many deals to close and then after closing we had it handed over that then this transfer or like um, this handover process was not ideal so we lost a lot of companies in the first month and in the onboarding phase because there was just a fraction of let's say how we could do a better job there with this new model we are trying exactly to avoid this because the AE is first of all super eager that it's a nice onboarding 
that is because it's going to maybe upsell them. And then also we are now with the referral program also want to have, if this experience is great, he's getting again new deals um, as a referral from the customer. So I think, and then um, I think that is why we also changed it. And now we are like on the more, okay, quality instead of quantity phase, while we also have more time for this, in which I think it's also for economic perspective, way more important and interesting. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan because it circles back also in the entire discovery for new customers. So the, the more the AEs know what customers post-purchase love and how they kind of get the the impact and experience the impact, they could use these, these information for making a better discovery, really do apply all the learnings for the next upcoming sale. So I really like that. Uh, if it's not interfering with the customer success team, that's the only disclaimer I would have. And then, of course, and that's why then me as a sales leader comes in if we are not taking over other jobs in that moment, right? Because what is then the problem? Where do you say, hey, is this still a e job or is this the yeah. um, customer success team? And then because we are new business sales, right? And I'm like, I'm very, I wouldn't say strict, but also within our company, I say I'm, I, my target is new business revenue, right? And I want to make this company big and we want to make it big with new customers and upsells also will be done, can be done by others. So I think, and that's why I need to um, also protect the team but also take their responsibility because it's if they churn, it's your responsibility. So it's a it's a fine line, I think. Yeah, absolutely. But it's a, it's a great one. If you master that and manage that that well, I think there there are definitely much more pros than cons, and it the overall yeah. process and and the user experience will be better. For absolutely. Better. What we even like. Um, Coming to that, what we even did last quarter, because you asked me for what kind of multiplier we had, we even had a multiplier for the AEs if there's a referral coming. Ah, nice. Wow. Because the, thi because the thing is, I mean, the referral program is super expensive, right? You pay a lot of money for the kick, whatever, but it's still cheaper than, let's say, if you have an MQA that is, let's say, you know how the cost of acquisition. So what we did, we said, okay, like AEs, if you bring your own referrals, you get on this awesome double kicker, like the outbound. Oh, nice. This is super smart. Okay. But but it was too expensive. Like this was one where you said, okay, like if then a deal, like you pay double commission, double MR, like then it takes, let's say, I think the cost of, it was like one year for free almost. So we said it was not really worth it. So we changed there a little bit, but that was something I think was a good, good trying at least. Yeah. Maybe one, one thing I, I would recommend to never do because I was harming the inbound leads. What I did back mm. back then, I was mm. uh, counting them just with 50% instead of what you did smartly mm. in applying kind of a 2x multiplier. So yeah. psychologically speaking, everyone will say, yeah, inbound is nice, but you're stealing money. Whereas mm -hmm. you are kind of promoting, uh, yeah. even I think even if you would ap uh, apply kind of 1.5 multiplier would be still encouraging to do so so just uh, sharing some learnings please never do kind of less than 100 percent because it's kind of uh, that people feel that you are yeah. stealing stuff from them it's really powerful i learned it the hard way and i think this is a great time for summarizing because we went we started from from top that uh, compensation models are super super important a for the motivation of our sales reps but also it's important for drive kind of a sustainable healthy growth uh, growth. Um, so to, to really align this kind of multiplier on OT classically, but also making sure that quota is attainable is super, super important. And one level further, we dig into, do you need to, to get a, a dedicated threshold in? Um, and we also discussed potential multiplier um, for SDRs and BDR. And we looked at how can the, the sales process be optimized in hand over to customer success. Is there anything you would like to add, Malte? I think what is also important, I think um, the compensation model is, can just be an addition to a motivation because I think also I th a lot of people, a lot of company things are money is the only thing that motivates salespeople. I think um, as powerful as a nice compensation model is also like overall the appreciation from the team. So I think um, just want to add that because what motivates actually human behavior, right? And also sales reps, I think also just a nice thank you and appreciation is something super important. And why I think the compensation model is such a, uh, like for sales reps, like a, a big thing is because it's so measurable, right? It's really measurable. I can now tell you, hey Bjorn, 
super cool podcast, but you cannot measure it, right? But it's as important as a compensation model. And I think that is something that I would like, wanted to add, like what motivates people, right? And I think that's motivation and sales, like they're from different forms. It's, I think it's worth a, an entire new and additional episode to really dive into what drives people. Of course, there is, I would say, there's a strong correlation in status and of course, also the, the money um, aspect comes in, but it's definitely not everything or really rarely. Yeah. Um, and we talked about that quota attainment of 60, 70% is definitely demotivating. So I think this is also worth mentioning, but I really like the, the other perspective right? because in, in terms of appreciation, also kindness. Yeah. So no one yeah. would, so just be nice and appreciative is definitely a component of the overall yeah. compensation and yeah, incentive model or exactly. it's about leadership. I would say. Malte, it was short while and so insightful. Thanks a lot for sharing so openly uh, your journey and I'm looking forward uh, for the next episode. More yeah. Thank you so much. And um, let me know if you have any question or reach out to me. Um, we will in touch. All right. And we will link your profile for the ones who would like to reach out to you directly. Thanks a lot. Yeah, perfect. Thank you.